Hey Skadians, welcome again. We are back with another amazing, brief, yet full of knowledge video on a very interesting topic, that is, dendritic cells. You must have seen a lot of videos on Scadia.com about the immune system, its components, and how all these components work in collaboration to provide the best protection to our body. Among many important cells that are part of our immune system and that are directly involved in the provision of immunity to our body are the dendritic cells. Let's briefly revise our concept of the immune system. We know very well that our immune system provides protection to our body against foreign microbes and other harmful substances by either innate immunity. That is an inborn immunity present at the time of birth, and it is a generalized immunity against any type of foreign particles, or through adaptive immunity. This is another type of immunity that develops over time, and so it is called acquired immunity. Also, adaptive immunity is known as specific immunity, as it performs specific actions against a particular pathogen. Innate immunity is provided by three main components that are physical or anatomical barriers, for example, skin and mucous membranes, some soluble mediators, such as cytokines and chemokines, etc. And lastly, the third component, that are the cellular structures involved in immunity. Some cells of the innate immune system reside in tissues and organs of the body ready to respond when a pathogen infects that tissue. Cells that are mainly involved in innate immunity are white blood cells, that are eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, which later become macrophages, and neutrophils. A very important white blood cell type of the innate immune system is the neutrophil, which is also called a polymorphonuclear, leukocyte PNN. About 80% of all neutrophils are actually in the bone marrow and they can be mobilized after infection to enter the bloodstream and then travel to the infected area. Other than these neutrophils, mast cells and dendritic cells also play vital roles in innate immunity. On the other hand, in adaptive immunity, Mainly lymphocytes are involved, that are B lymphocytes, or simply B cells, and T lymphocytes, or simply T cells. Let us see what happens. We know when a microbe enters our body, it is termed an antigen, if it has the ability to generate an immune reaction against it. So, once the cell of the innate immune system comes in contact with these antigens, they get detected by these cells as a foreign body. And then necessary actions are taken against these antigens, such as it may start an inflammatory response. Now here comes the class of cells that play a significant role at the junction of innate and adaptive immunity. And they are called APCs, or antigen-presenting cells. As the name implies, these are the cells that present antigens to other cells, such as lymphocytes, and are mainly macrophages, B cells, and dendritic cells. These APCs are very efficient at endocytosing extracellular antigen, processing it, and presenting it, usually alone with co-stimulators that complete the immune activation process. These antigen peptides are then presented to T cells by APCs in association with MHC class II molecules. So, this was a brief introduction to the immune system. Here our focus is on dendritic cells only. So, let's look at the types and characteristics of these dendritic cells. Explore our extensive library of over 1800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics, only on scadia.com.